All right, so um, I just did three questions that weren't recorded, but I am beginning again with these questions that will be recorded. So sorry about that. It happens. That's why it's really good to be on live. Um, so I'm going to start with this question. This is a Q&A for TTU, okay, for new students or anybody that wants, is that my hair? Anybody that um, needs clarification. All right, Marcy asks, Thanks, Kathy. And how about when things get crazy busy at work and in the family? Don't even have time to cut my nails, much less keep on with TTU. Well, here, wait, I disappeared. Well, that's not really true because it isn't that you're keeping on with TTU. TTU, really, once you've taken it and now you're running with it, it's life management. It's what Every single person on the planet that has a home, things, and you don't even have to have a family, do. Everybody. Now, you're either doing it now or you're doing it later. So, you remember the no excuse rule? The things that you have going on in your life, how busy you are, and the perception that now, believe me, listen, listen to me a second, right? In case you want to say, you have no freaking clue, lady. You have no freaking clue. Listen. When my daughter-in-law was dying of cancer, I had the late night that I was there. So, and... Of course, I was there as often as I could have been. I still had three jobs and was doing Tide with Tudor at the time. Was doing this, okay? Um, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't the Tidy Tutor yet, but I was in, in process of learning about it. And I'm, I'm who you are, all right? So talk about no time there there was no time now Emily was only maybe I wasn't doing tidy tutor at the time was I I think I was doing live classes then and I didn't get online yet because that was five years ago and Johanna it's been six years so um, all right so let's just throw that out let's just pretend that didn't even exist anyway um, Emily was um, 14, I think. All right. So I still had a kid that had to go to school that, um, Joey was, um, 20. Um, so I still had a kid that had to go to school. Joey was in college. Um, she was in, in sports. We had two dogs. I was divorced. I had three jobs and I had a daughter in law in the hospital who was dying. And I had to, so there, there was there was no time no time it, there was barely time for sleep um, so there was that and there's another th time that I could think of when I could be in that place of saying the same thing um, when I was going to college and I had full credits four children under the age of 10 I was a gimp because the car accident was not that long from then so I could not get around. I mean, if you talk about pain, I walked, I was, I did nothing without pain. Nothing. Never talked about it though. Never said it because I, I have this belief that anyway, that has another story. That has an, has, that's a whole nother story. Um, so I was in severe pain on, on a regular basis, taking four credits for, I mean, four, um, four classes. So full credits in college had two jobs and four kids under the age of 10, 10 years old and under. And they were all in sports. All of them were in sports. Every one of them. Sometimes we lived at the ball field. So, and, all right. So, I, the only reason I said that wasn't to be like, oh, look at how great I am. I just want you to understand that I understand. All right? I get it. And I'm not saying that it was an easy time course neither one of those times were easy times you know I can of course you know pull out of my hat other times that were kind of similar as far as like who the hell has time for this kind of thing you know 
Um, I mean, if you want me to, I will tell you some of them because there, there's more, all right? There's more of, of those kind of things. Um, so, yeah, no, it isn't easy, but it's, but it's not the reason. It's not the reason that, you, that the house is a mess. It's not the reason that it might be. I mean, it's definitely the reason that there's no time for um, rest. Definitely. There was no time for rest. I had no time for rest. Um, it might be a reason why there's, you know, no time to get your nails done. I mean, like, you know, literally get your nails done. Um, you know, why there's no time to get your, your hair done or even to dye your hair if you needed to even do that. But um, it's, not a, it's not a reason for the mess at all. A reason for our mess is our habits. It doesn't take any more time to take a wrapper and throw it in the garbage as it does to put it on a countertop. So no matter what you have going in your life, I know you're going to hate me. You're going to hate hearing this because when you're in it, it feels like you've got to be out of your mind. It's That's why I have in TTU 2.0 um, building your house in the rain when you're caught with your pants down. Now, those things that I talked about that happened in my life happened in my life after I got it together, all right? It, I had before, um, before those two examples that I talked about, all right, before the, the times that was that, was that um, time-consuming, I guess is the best way to, to put it, I had been in a complete disaster. What would it have been like if I had that situation going to college and, and during that time, um, had that car accident, um, had my, my daughter-in-law in the hospital, um, and, and, you know, I mean, like, my mortgage was $1,800 a month. It was just my mortgage. I was the only one that paid for that. So I couldn't say I have to not do this work while I could go and take care of my, my you know, be there for my son, you know, whatever, however, it, all of the stuff that I had to do during that time, I couldn't say I'm not going to go to work. I had to continue to pay my, my heat. There was time that I was cold in my house when I couldn't get the oil delivered. There were times about that because I had to make some choices. And one of the choices was, all right, well, I'm not going to do two of those jobs. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to pay that bill. Well, I got gas and we could turn the, on the oven in the kitchen. I'm not saying any of this stuff is easy. But do you have to live in a mess door in it? Absolutely not. You don't. We don't live in a mess because of our circumstances. We live in a mess because of our habits and because we have too much stuff. Because even if you have really good habits and you have way too much stuff, it's just impossible for it not to unravel. It just is. So um, I know there was something else that I wanted to say. Um, oh, the building your house with your ha with building building your house in the rain or being caught with your pants down. If those situations happened in my life when I was in a mess and didn't have the tools to get out of it, absolutely, it would have been hell on earth, hell on earth. It was almost hell on earth then. Um, it really, when when I was going to college, actually, it wasn't hell on, hell on earth at all. It was actually quite lovely. I really liked it. My cir the circumstances were, um, my I had the four kids, the three of them, went to school all day, and the baby I dropped him off at a girlfriend's house. I made it so that my classes were four in a row. So I only went two days a week. I had no lunch in between. I only went two days a week. So two days a week, the baby Joey got dropped off. Emily wasn't born yet. He got dropped off at a day at the, not daycare. There was no daycare in the world then. I don't think he got dropped off at my girlfriend's house. I dropped the kids off at the bus. I went to college. I did my classes. I came home, picked them up. They were home. You know, I got them. I think I got home just after them or just before them. God, I don't remember, but whatever. All right. So it was right when they got home picked up my son on the way home 
and we lived our life. My husband happened to be working nights at that time, so I never saw him. <laughs> it was kind of nice, you know, that it, it was just it was just complete peace at the house. And, you know, we, we ate um, cereal in bed watching Star Trek. You know, we, we there were no real rules that you kind of have to have when you have a significant other around kind of thing. But everything, every you know, they had their chores. I had a routine. The house, did, the house was never, never, never out of place during that time. Um, if anybody is in my coffee talks, you'll know that I've talked about that time in my life when I thought that the place was a wreck because I would sometimes have dishes next to the sink from breakfast that didn't get done and a, a load of laundry at the bottom of my stairs and you know from because it was an upstairs bedrooms and then downstairs was the kitchen and you know living area so there'd be like a load of laundry at the bottom of the stairs sometimes there'd be some toys out in the living room I considered that I, I used to put myself down and say oh look at you you're still a wreck and that's why I love the coffee talks because my 2020 is your freaking freedom because now you can not step in the hole that I did because I wasn't in the standards of the girlfriends that I had in my community when I lived in Pennsylvania I lived in Pennsylvania at the time I was like thinking, oh, there you are. This is who you are. This is who you are. This is what you do. You're a mess. That's not a mess. That's not a mess. They were stay-at-home moms. They were organizationally gifted to begin with. So their places were like something out of a freaking magazine. I was comparing myself to people that I had no right comparing myself to. I was insanely busy living a very peaceful life. Do I have to give a crap what you think about my clothes on the bottom of the stairs? Mm -mm, no, I don't. But it wasn't about them. It was about me. It was about how I felt about me. So if you feel like there's no time to do anything, there probably isn't. But it doesn't mean that the house has to be a mess. If the house is a mess, then what's happened is you've been caught with your pants down and it can be, like I said, hell. Um, it could be really, really, really hard, especially if you do have a significant other and they're not pulling their weight. That's even harder because that's, you know, resentment and all that other stuff fits in there and it's not good. Um, so get help. Do what you have to do to really make it happen. You know, when the summer comes this year, and you have some time, use it to freaking do it already. And um, regardless of that, get your routine in place. Take the time to go aside. We want to throw the baby out with the bathwater when things get busy and we think we have no time for anything and I can't do this. And you kind of revealed that a little bit in there by your 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 sentence when you said, um, I have no no time to do my nails, much less TTU. So I get it. We think, oh my God, I have so much to do. I can't do that too. It's the only way it does work because it's the answer out of out of the mess. It's the answer out of the chaos. It's what every organizationally person gifted person does that you don't know. And even if you've done it already and now you're, you know, things get crazy. What we end up doing is thinking, oh, I can't do that anymore. I have to do this. And then you, you start all over again with something that never worked to begin with. So, you know, get your, do what you got to do so that you have a morning routine. You get up 30 minutes before you have to. You know exactly what you're going to do. This time of your life, when you're that busy, you say no to everyone. Whoever needs you. I'm so sorry. I am very stretched right now. You need to find someone else during this season in my life to help you with that. During the time in your life when things are like that, it you take care of you and yours and no more because there's no more time for it. That's a lot of times those little extra things is what just pushes us right over the edge. So um, get help in. 
you know, call up somebody that can help you on a Saturday to de-junk an entire room in the day. If you have six rooms in the house and you can get it done in, in every Saturday in six weeks, it's done. See what you can do to sell stuff so that you can make the money so that you can pay the person to come and do it. And if you know what to tell them to do, you know, don't have them just come and clean. I don't mean that. That you're de-junking that room. You have your boxes, you have your, your garbage, you have your recycling, and you say, okay, we're doing this and give them the rules and then you do it do it all in a day when you get that done your life becomes yours and that that scenario that you're living right now is going to feel a lot different a lot different than it does I'm not saying it's not going to feel like oh my god depending on your circumstances like I said when I was working um, two jobs and I had um, I had those four kids and those four kids, God, if I, when I had my four kids and I was working two jobs and I was going to college, it wasn't hell. When my daughter-in-law was in the hospital, it was. It was a, it was a whole different ball game. First of all, I was completely responsible for the bills, completely on my own. And second of all, when I, I could arrange my days when I was in the college thing, there was no arranging my days when she was in the hospital. Every spare second was spent in the hospital. Okay. So it's a whole, it was a whole different thing, regardless of whatever it is. It's just a season. It's not going to last forever. So just see it as that. This isn't going to be forever. It's a season in my life. Do the best you can with it, but get the house together so that the best it could be is actually what it will be. I hope that was helpful. Um, this is Melanie. I feel so overwhelmed with the de-junking process. Melanie, can you please type in when you got started? I don't mean actually when you enrolled, but when you actually got started, all right? So if you just enrolled, you could say I just enrolled and I just got started. But if you enrolled like last year, but you're just getting started, just let me know when you, when you, when you began, all right? All right, Melanie, you just answered me. I enrolled about a month ago when I started at that time. Okay, beautiful. All right, so I just want to say something real quick about that. How long have you struggled with the disorder? Like, has it been since you could remember? Were people always making fun of you because of your bedroom? Like, was your mother always saying something about your bedroom? Um, were you always late with projects in school? Like, how, how old are you now? And how long has it been a struggle? I'd like to know that. Um, I feel so overwhelmed with the de-junking process. Last week, I cleared out the closet. And that day, the kitchen became an absolute mess for the things that moved out from the closet space. I don't know how to stop the cycle. All right. Are you on, did you do session two? There's, the, re, the way we do our de-junking wouldn't, couldn't, couldn't allow that to happen. So um, we don't clean out a closet. We don't ever want to ever, ever again pull out more than we could possibly put back. That was our process that we used to do doesn't work. The de-junking process that we have is like a safeguard so that that doesn't happen. Things are done systematically and on purpose and scheduled. So you, um, if, you're, if you're cleaning out, if you were in the closet, I cleared, cleaned out the closet and that day the kitchen became an absolute mess. Okay, so I'm assuming that it's the kitchen closet that you cleared out, all right? So that would mean that you were in either that room that you chose to do because you could choose a room, remember, or you were in that zone. So when you're in a zone, you do it according to plan. Box for giveaway sell. And I recommend that if you're, you know, in the beginning, just freaking give it away. Unless you have a really far away empty space that you can put your cell things in until you could deal with them, just give it away. All you're asking for is more chaos. Give it away with asking God to just return back to you what you need because most likely you're never going to sell it. So you have your giveaway cell, you have your garbage, you have your recycling, you have put away in another room in the house, you have your storage, you have a box for small things that you find like um, pictures and pens and paper clips and jewelry and pictures and you have a can or a jar for change. 
these things, if they're not in place, you're going to find yourself in trouble. Why? Because everything just gets pulled out. Now what happens? You get a phone call, you get tired, whatever happens, and you, you forget you have to go somewhere. Stuff is everywhere. That makes it. Stuff isn't everywhere. It is in a spot that it belongs. You set a timer. Literally. Set a timer. Commit to that time. 15 minutes minimum, one hour maximum. Set a timer. You continue to de-junk those th one thing at a time. We have the how to de-junk video and I show you how to do it. One thing at a time. Do I need this? No. Is it garbage? No. It's a giveaway. Giveaway. Do I need this? Yes. Does it belong in this room? No. In another room in the house. Do I need this? No. Is it garbage? Yes. Goes in the garbage. See? You just do that. One thing at a time. Timer goes off. Ding! Okay. What do I do now? I take the garbage out. I take the things that go to someone else. I put it in a bag. I bring it out to the car. I have the things that have to go to another room in the house. I go into that other room. If that room is clean, I put them away. If the room is a disaster, I just put them in that room and I don't care. The things that are storage, I just leave in that box. And I put the lid on it and I keep that with the other things until I go to the next section when it's time to do the dejunking again in that room. If you do it this way, that will never happen to you. Okay? That's how you break the cycle. And I want you to give another meaning to the word overwhelm, all right? I don't think you're overwhelmed. Now, of course, yeah, if you pull out more than you could put back, you're going to be overwhelmed. But in this process, please think of it more like you're excited. Because it's a, the feelings that you have when you're doing what you're doing are a lot of feelings you never felt before. You have support. You have people who have been there and done that and succeeded in it. You have people in your life that are seeing you do something and sticking to it for the first time and maybe even saying some stuff to you. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're trying this again. You're doing another project. You know, like you have your own psyche going on saying to yourself, you know, who do you think you are? You've never been able to do this before. You also have that comfort zone thing that this, this isn't the way you do things. What happens if you get it all cleaned up and everybody says to you, oh, yeah, you think you're so busy? You've got plenty of time. What do you do all day? The house, what, oh, the house, when the house looks like a mess, everybody knows I'm busy. Look at how, what a mess it is. All this crap is going on. You are stirring up stuff that has never been stirred before. So you're going to feel something. It doesn't have to be overwhelm. It could be just excitement. And remember that hard doesn't mean bad. Hard work, like, you know, when we're doing something and it feels like hard work, a lot of times we interpret that as being bad, like, oh my God, this sucks. No, it doesn't. Give it a different meaning. Wow, this is great. Now, you might be saying, wait, I don't get that. I can't do that. I, I don't see it, how you, what you're saying it doesn't seem to be right there. What do you mean? No, it sucks. Let's pretend you were getting a garden together. I hate that you could see this. Let's pretend that you were getting a garden together, all right? And you, you just bought a house. You always wanted a garden. So you go out in the backyard. You see, like, just a mess and nobody's ever had a garden back there before you see a spot perfect for a garden and so you go out there with a pitchfork and a rake and a shovel right and you have your um, brown paper recycle bags that you could put out front when you're done and you start digging and you start you know you have a hoe and you're bringing the ground and all of that right you work for four straight hours. You have blisters on your, on your hands, right? You have blisters here. You may, Maybe you're even bleeding. You're dirty, right? You have your hair coming all out in all different ways. You are tired as anything, and your muscles ache. What do you do? Do you say, oh, this sucks? Mm -mm. 
you put your hands on your hips, you step back and you say, holy mackerel, look at this. You see, you gave hard work a different meaning. Do the same thing with this, all right? See what I mean? Hard doesn't have to mean bad. Okay, if you um, wanna ask me another question, then please do about that. And um, I see that you've only been involved in a month. Let me read this. I enrolled about a month ago and I started at that time. Okay, remember something. How many years have you been in this mess? How many years have you been trying and trying and trying? You think it's going to happen overnight? Do you think that you out in that backyard doing that work that you did means that next week when you have another day off, you're not going to have to put in the same amount of time? It, it takes time. It isn't going to happen overnight. It's going to be, it's a process. The beautiful part is this. It might take you four Saturdays or two weekends to get it ready for planting. Once it's ready for planting, all you do now is maintain. If you get out there every three days and you weed, you make sure you water it, it's easy. It's never easy in the beginning. You need to get fit, it hurts, it takes a while. After a while, it's not so hard anymore. It's maintaining. Beginning's always hard, so give yourself a break. Okay. Teresa asks, I can't get my adult kids to take their stuff to their place suggestions. Oh my goodness. I have coffee talks on this one too. I have it when I was in the midst of it, going through it. Um, we teach people how to treat us. Up until this point, it was fine, right? You're changing the rules now, and they don't like it. You're going to have to be ruthless about it. There's lots of parents, and I know you know them, that tell them, you know, this stuff's got to go. And they know it, and they don't care. And the minute those kids, the, the door hits them in the ass, they're ripping up the rug, they're putting a new floor down, and they're getting their exercise equipment in that bedroom. It happens to lots of families, and none of their kids think that they suck because of it. The reason they think we suck is because we've never done that before. The principles have changed. They don't like it. So I actually, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with that because I just did a coffee talk on this. I have two, actually. But the one I, I'm editing now is going to be up, so you'll be able to hear hear that. I, I talk about adult children. Um, just be the boss. It's your house. It's your home. And they love you. They're your children. They'll always love you. They might not like what's going on, but they're not going to love you anymore. You just stick to your guns, and you say, you give them the time. You tell them, this is, my, this is what I'm doing at home. This is what I need you to do. And this is the date I need you to do it. Now, it's going to be tough because they're not going to believe you because you've said lots of things before. You've got to do, you've got to do what you say now. And, you know, maybe do it gradually instead of putting it on the, and telling them it's going to be in the front of the house on Thursday night because the garbage man comes on Friday. So if you want your stuff, you better get here before the garbage man come. If you don't want to go that far, tell them every, I'm taking, I'm gathering everything and I'm putting it on the front porch or um, if like I did this with my kids, cause when I was selling my house, you know, they had all their stuff in my attic and I mean, my son was really good at it, on it, um, about it. He actually had his wife's things in the attic. I mean, you know, she had passed away. She was only 25 years old. And he, he asked me, I don't know what to do with these things. I said, just put them in my attic, George. So I didn't care that they were there, but now they had to go. I'm selling my house and I don't want people to see anything. I want them to see clear because your house sells when there's clear. And I, you know, I asked him, I said, Georgie, Johanna's things, I'm going to donate them. And he said, fine, just not her artwork um, or her journals. And I said, okay. So I, I just took them out. You know, I did it. And, um, and he was really good about getting the stuff out of there. Uh, my daughter was not so good. She, she didn't like it. She was like, what's the difference? What's the difference? 
what are you going to do? So what, what I did first was I took it all out and I put it in the porch. I said, all of your stuff is in the front porch. Can you please come and get it by, you know, whatever day it was? She didn't come. So I said, all right, Kate. I'm going to go through your things and the things that I go through that I feel like are garbage, I'm going to put aside. So then I like called her and I said, all right, here's all the things that I think are garbage. Yeah, all right, they can go. And then I did that. Then when it came to crunch time, I actually did put them out front. Now, I don't blame her at all and I don't think she's a jerky girl or what a, you know, I don't know. I don't think any less of her because of it, because it's what I taught her. I taught her that this is fine. It made her, she felt like I didn't love her. That was, you know, her interpretation of it. You know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Does she still love me? Yes. Does she forgive me? Yes. Does she still think I was wrong? Probably. Do I care? Nope. All right. So there was that. All right. So that's that. We, we didn't do too bad. Ten, an hour and ten minutes. Um, I didn't record the first two um, questions, but, you know, that's okay. Um, if you're not in Tidy Tutor Insiders, I really would suggest that you get in into Insiders. Now, Insiders is going to be changing quite a bit later, um, so, you know, you'll find out about that as time goes by. But it's really important to be to have this ongoing support. It really is. This is, this is like a coffee talk in a way. Um, because we actually didn't do specifics about TTU, but we have covered things that kind of are like those snags and how we're able to, you know, things that we just kind of like don't see and just life in general. And that is, you know, coffee talks are just freaking the bomb. You know, how many people get a course and the author with the course, you know? All right. So Patricia said, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so if nobody has any more questions, I'm going to sign out now. All right, so we're done with this. I see. Do I have any more questions? Um, Alice said, the great to hear you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Marie said, thanks, Kathy. I really wanted to hear to help wanted to hear to help read notes that I also understand where people have difficulty following as always you've done a great job oh great I'm happy thank you and Melanie said thank you so much Kathy you're welcome love you guys so much I hope you know that I love you all right so I'll see you next time in Thailand we're gonna have a coffee talk while I'm in Thailand it's not scheduled yet but I will schedule it as soon as I get there I just have to see what's going on with my group and that kind of thing and the time is different so I'll probably do it early early morning which will be late night for you guys all right because it's like 12 hours dis difference um, you're welcome so have a great chip great talk tonight thank you yeah I leave tomorrow morning so excited all right okay love you guys see you see you soon all right I'll see you in Thailand okay bye and when you know one other thing real quick Thank you so much for what you guys do for each other on Facebook. Like today I wasn't able to be on there all day. I, I popped on later um, when I was out on my phone and I was looking and seeing, you know, everybody right and all that kind of crap. And um, I just love how you guys are there for each other. I really, really yeah. do. And, and I love how we love each other. I really do. And thank you. I'll have, thank you, Marie. All right. Take care, everybody. Now I'm really saying goodbye. Bye.